I'm going to spend a moment to talk about and I guess just to discuss the importance of the shape of a distribution um, and in particular when we're analysing uh, groups of, of scores, uh, just looking at the way they're distributed actually can tell us a lot about what's going on um, with that particular group or sample or population. What, I might, what I'll do is I'll start off with a, just a, a random data set and just I'll get you to have a, have a think about this for a moment. So let's, I'm just going to come up with a few random scores. No, there's no rhyme or reason to this. They're just a group of scores and I might just come up with maybe seven of them and Okay, so there we go. So we've got one, 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 two, three, five, and 100. Now looking at that immediately, you can see that there's clearly one number that's, that's out of place, um, which is the 100. There seems to be a cluster of, of scores here between one, one to 10 or, or one to five, um, bit of a cluster there. And then there's a, a big gap and then there's this very, very large outlier, uh, 100. So the median of this data set that's fairly obvious, and I've put it in. I've, I've listed the the scores in order. So the median is is clearly two. Okay, and the mean one plus one plus one plus two plus three plus five plus one hundred. And we're going to divide that by seven, and we're going to get sixteen point one four. Okay, so roughly sixteen point one four. So what's happened here? The median is two, that's the middle score, yet the, the mean of, this, of these seven numbers is, is many times higher. So that's clearly the effect of this outlier. So what this outlier has done is that it's effectively, it's effectively pulled the, the mean um, to the positive side, okay, or to, to, to the right-hand side. Drawing this as a distribution would look something like, like this, okay? You can see that most of the numbers are quite low and there's a few of them, okay? So the y-axis is, is normally frequency, okay? And this is your, these are your, the x-axis is your scores. So it would look something like this, okay? I might just extend that a little bit further. And so bulk of the numbers, okay, bulk of the scores are actually toward the left, left-hand side. Now, the 100 would be probably be somewhere here. Okay. So this is what we call positively skewed data because the 100 has, it creates a tail, right? It actually skews the mean instead of the mean being close to the median where probably perhaps maybe it's where it should be close to. Um, this outlier has clearly pulled the mean to the positive side. Okay. So this is what we call positively skewed, a positively skewed distribution. Okay. Okay. Because we have a we have a positive tail, okay, on the positive side or on the right-hand side. So, in this instance, when the mean is significantly higher than the median, there's a good chance that this is the shape of the distribution. Now, why is this of, of importance? Well, if there's a tail, um, or the distribution is, is lopsided or skewed, then questions need to be asked, where did this, where did this 100 come from? Because clearly it's, it's way off from, from all the others, all the other scores, and that raises questions. So analyzing the shape of a distribution gives us a very clear picture as to what is going on. So if these are, for example, test results, okay, so seven students uh, took, took an exam, um, one student got 100%, and the other students got extremely low scores, well, one would have to ask the question, what happened? Did, did the one that got 100% cheat? Um, was the exam so hard that basically, you know, six students could barely answer it, but one student studied extremely hard and, and somehow managed to get 100%? So it's really these questions that, that come up, okay? Now, negatively skewed is really just, just sort of the other way around, okay? So if I was to change this, and, and I, I may or may not create another video around this, because if we can understand what positively skewed data is, negatively skewed data is really just the same thing, but flipped, okay? So just imagine, and I might just draw it here on the bottom. So just imagine a, a, a lot of large numbers and just one very, very small number. So the tail, instead of being on the right-hand side, okay, you can see that the, the, the bulk of the data um, is on the right, but there's a, a negative tail. 
So this is negatively skewed. Okay, and generally caused by some uh, very, very small outlier or an outlier um, that's on the, on the left hand side. So where would the mean and the median be placed? And I might just do this in a different color, just conscious of the video not going too long to, to bore you. Okay, if the me median will be very low, so it's sort of the, the halfway point. Okay, so I might just put this one here as the, as the median. The mean is somewhere up here. So, okay, this would be roughly, perhaps this is where the, where the mean would be. So the mean would be to the positive of the median. Okay, and that's actually another reason why it's called positively skewed because well, usually and generally the mean is much higher than the median. Okay, there might be exceptions to this, um, but generally speaking, the mean would be higher than the median. Okay, and the other way around for negatively skewed. Okay, the median would be quite high. Okay, so this, this would be the median there, and the mean would be quite low. Okay, so, or, or, a little, or lower than the median. So usually caused by, by some very small outlier. Okay, hope that makes sense. All the best with your studies.